happy Friday, everyone. This is uh, Friday, March the 3rd, um, week of County Government Day. It's a very stormy afternoon out there, lots of high winds, so keep a close eye on the weather. I hope everybody's safe and doesn't have any difficulties out of the storms. I want to update you on a few things that were going on this week. Uh, obviously, the big one, County Government Day. We appreciate so much all the people who turned out. Uh, it was tremendous attendance, maybe uh, set a record of the last recent years. Over 350 county officials in town uh, and, and other staff for our meeting uh, at the Doubletree Hotel. Uh, we also saw you guys go over to the, to the Monday night sessions of the House and Senate. We saw you in committee meetings. We saw you meeting with your legislators and walking in the legislature, uh, having discussions with, with senators and representatives about county priorities. And that's exactly why we wanted you to come to town. So very happy to see you there. Um, some of the big news this week and of great importance to county highway departments is that the governor's Transportation Modernization Act of 2023 moved forward in both House and Senate this week. Uh, in the House Tuesday morning, both committees, we had uh, lots of county officials, county highway officials, uh, sitting out there in the audience to see what was going on. Um, Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock while our breakfast was happening, and we were hearing from the Speaker of the House and the Lieutenant Governor and the Governor and others, a lot of county highway officials were over there to make sure their presence was known. Uh, they were in the House Transportation Committee. The bill had discussion there and moved forward on a unanimous voice vote. Uh, it goes to the Governmental Ops Committee in the House next. Uh, so it's got an extra step over there. The next day, Wednesday in the Senate, uh, again, had a lot of county uh, highway officials return to be there in town and to sit in the audience for the discussions. There was a great deal more of uh, questions and also opposition in the Senate Transportation Committee. The, the bill did pass, but it was on a very narrow five to four vote, uh, and it, it saw opposition from a number of members on the committee. Um, still moving forward and we think it's in good shape, but it, it means it's critical for you all to, to be contacting your senators and representatives, reaching out to them. Uh, the administration has thanked us for having people there and have talked about what a big difference that makes, uh, but they can they need to continue to hear from you all. So if you are, if you can reach out to your senators and representatives, let them know that we support the Governor's Transportation Modernization Act. Uh, and something we're asking is that you now talk to them about uh, requesting to sign on to the bill as a co-sponsor. That sends a signal to the other members of the House and Senate uh, of the support for the bill and how many people are on board with it. So, so do that this week if, if at all possible. Looking at some of the governor's other initiatives, his uh, proposal to extend and make permanent the funding for the summer lear learning camps and to expand those and to bring into more students uh, moved forward. Uh, that bill is headed to the um, Senate floor on Monday night. Uh, it's got to go through House Finance still on the House side. The governor's proposal on brownfields that would create grants uh, to help clean up small brownfield sites and also some of the larger sites all across the state and help those uh, properties get back into productive use. That bill uh, moved forward as well. It's actually on the consent calendar of both chambers on Monday night. So that's some of big initiatives coming out of the administration that are moving. Uh, on some education issues, a couple of things to update you on. There was a caption bill that's been sitting out there all session uh, sponsored by both the Lieutenant Governor and the Speaker of the House. In the House, that bill was put on notice this week in the K-12 subcommittee, an amendment was filed for that. Uh, it was presented by Chairman White and discussed very briefly. It was proposing to create um, authorization for two new types of charter schools, which the State Charter Commission could uh, authorize and set up in any county in the state. Uh, it would not require local approval of the school board of the county to, to set these up. One form of charter school would be designed to provide services to homeschool students. Uh, the second would be to provide boarding services in a boarding school for at-risk youth. Um, both of the types of charters would have the ability to recruit students from anywhere in the state of Tennessee. Uh, we're trying to, to reach out and have some meetings. We've got some concerns about how that would affect local funding. Um, to, we want to clarify, is local funding going to be required? For these two new types of charter schools, if it does, uh, and they're recruiting statewide, who's going to be paying that? So if you created a charter in one county and it recruited homeschool students from all the surrounding counties that they wanted to serve, uh, which taxpayers are going to fund that portion? Is it going to be this, the home county of those students or the county where the charter school is being set up? So we are continuing to try to get more information about that and reaching out to members to meet on that subject. Um, another bill that we see perennially uh, with regard to elected school superintendents was up this past week in Senate education. That's Senate Bill 910. 
as usual, the bill failed in committee. That uh, proposal has been brought almost every year since we went to elected school superintendents back in the 19 or went away from them back in the 1990s. Uh, there's been a proposal almost every year to return, um, and it usually cannot get out of committee. And that was the case again this year. Uh, so that hits a few of the education highlights. Um, some other topics that we're seeing showing up and, and one that we're working on and our, our the TCSA board voted to support was the um, proposal to allow counties and cities to levy development taxes and impact fees. Certain uh, certain local governments can do that right now based on private acts or authority for a very limited number of counties with high growth. Uh, there's been this legislation proposed this year to try to make that available to all cities and counties. Um, it is hitting a lot of opposition from realtors and home builders. Uh, the bill was scheduled to be considered in a couple of committees this week, but frankly, the support wasn't there to get it out. Um, the sponsors chose to defer the bills uh, to allow there to be continued work on that. If that is something you're interested in your county having the ability to use, your legislators need to be hearing from you about that. Um, also deferred this week, there was a bill proposed to allow certain uh, participation electronically in meetings of county commissions if the uh, if a member of the county commission has a family or a medical emergency is unable to attend in person. Uh, that bill is, is also getting some pushback and opposition from the Tennessee Press Association and some of those types of organizations. Uh, it was deferred this week and we'll see if it comes up next week. Uh, a bill that did move this week, House Bill 1367, Senate Bill 637 relates to opioid settlements uh, for especially county mayors. Um, you have probably been getting some information through email about upcoming additional settlements that they're asking counties to sign on and join. Uh, this legislation relates to that and it would basically take this second wave of opioid settlements that involves uh, Walgreens and Walmart and some of the other pharmaceutical chains and some other defendants. Uh, this second wave of funding is coming into Tennessee and the proposal in this legislation is to say, let's share it the same way we've got an established framework for the initial settlements. Uh, those of you who are at the conference, there were a uh, a couple of different great meetings with regard to opioid settlements um, in the county mayor's meeting on Monday afternoon. Michael Leftwich, the attorney general's office, briefed the mayors and answered questions about what's happening with these new settlements that they're starting to get information about. And then on Tuesday morning after our breakfast, um, a number of officials stayed in the room. We heard from Dr. Stephen Lloyd, who chairs the state opioid abatement council, and Mary Shelton, who is their executive director. You have a lot of good information and advice about what's happening, just understanding the opioid crisis in general, um, what things are needed, sorry about that, in, uh, in our communities and how we can help um, help put these dollars to the best use to, to turn lives around and, and to save lives and families in Tennessee. So some movement there on the opioid abate, abatement settlements. Um, looking ahead to next week, it's gonna be another busy week again. In the state and local government committee, uh, there's a bill that's starting to move. There's been ongoing discussions between uh, some of the county associations about how to clarify some technical problems with officials' bonds when they start a new term. Uh, you all just went through that and got elected and took office September 1. As you know, officials are supposed to take out bonds to protect the county against uh, any kind of malfeasance in office. Those don't get approved until later in the month of September when the county commission meets. Um, technically, under the law, local officials are not supposed to take any official actions until their board, their bonds have been approved by the county commission. Uh, so this delay is kind of creating a, a delicate window in there where an official takes office September 1. They really need to start doing the duties of their office right away, but those bonds sometimes aren't approved for two or three weeks. Um, some counties have gone to insurance to, to relieve this problem. Some counties have a special called meeting of the county commission that first week of September. Um, but the proposal this year is basically to say we want to retain the county commission's ability to raise the bond if they think that's necessary. Um, but we're going to eliminate this kind of approval process uh, and make it more automatic that the, the county mayor would initiate the process of getting those bonds in place during the month of August. So they're there on September 1. Uh, so that proposal will be presented in uh, committees coming up this next week. Um, there's some some supplement. Um, there's an EMS pay supplement, House Bill 155. Uh, there's also a pay supplement that's been proposed for correctional officers trying to get some state funded supplements to to reward folks in those first responder types of positions and jailer positions uh, when they get their education done. So uh, any little thing like that is going to help with recruiting and retaining those officers. So those bills are up again next week. Uh, 
And also there's a proposal, there's been a caption bill related to the Electronic Monitoring Indigency Fund, which is a fund that helps to pay for ankle bracelets and GPS monitoring and other types of monitoring for criminal defendants. If they are indigent, there's a fund that those, the cost, the monthly cost of those can be charged from, but um, so we've got to watch, watch and see what that caption bill is going to do. So, um, and another unusual thing we've seen that's just come up, there's a bill, House Bill 1070, with regard to drones. Uh, apparently in the National Defense Authorization Act of 2019 at the federal level, there was a prohibition on buying drones from certain, um, from basically from certain companies that are involved in China and that may have national security concerns because the, the drones could be transmitting information back to China. Uh, there's legislation moving to say that, and a lot of a lot of drones in Tennessee apparently are bought from that company. Uh, but there is legislation moving forward to say when you have to, when those break down and you're going to replace them, you have to start buying from from companies that are not on that uh, watch list. Uh, so we'll get you more information about that as the legislation moves on. Again, thanks every thanks to everybody who came and joined us at County Government Day Monday and Tuesday. Uh, great turnout. Very good to see you all. We'll be getting information out soon about the post-legislative conference that's in the end of May. Uh, we've got some great sessions already that are being planned and developed for that, and uh, we will look forward to see you all in Gatlinburg. Meantime, be safe and have a nice weekend.